Good day. I'm Kitty of the Hobart Dolls Hospital. Welcome to the Hobart Dolls Hospital YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and like. And also let me know if there's anything you would like me to do a video on for you to see. Today I'm going to be looking at doll criers. This technique that I'm going to show you could also use with most of the bear criers as well. This is a, a crier from an old pedigree doll. There's also similar type criers in a lot of the composite dolls as well. You'll find that over time they lose their sound. You can hear the, the little piece moving around inside it, but it's not making any sound. Now the piece that's inside is like this. It's actually quite heavy. It's weighted. It's got a little reed in the middle of it and it moves up and down inside this chamber. It moves up as you tilt the doll and then as you tilt the doll back it comes down and pushes the air up through the little reed and makes the sound. Now sometimes what happens is that the um, there's like a little rubber flange that runs around this. The flange can give way or the inside of the container can just get worn from it moving up and down. Any number of things can cause this to stop working. If you blow through it, which is worthwhile doing before you repair it, just make sure that reed's working. So it works. Smudged my lipstick, but it works. Okay, so what you need to do is access this. I use a very fine saw and cut the bottom of the crier off very, very close to that bot to the uh, to the base, so that you end up with a thin base. The reason why I say use a thin saw um, is that obviously when you start doing things to these containers, when you start cutting them, you're making that container shorter. And if you destroy too much of what it's made of and you shorten the container too much, then the sound that it produces is also going to be very short because that little device inside is only going to move a short, a short distance. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're trying to open one of these up. So here's one I've done before. I've opened it up and that's what's come out. When you insert this back into place, you keep the reed underneath. Now, because the flange has gone that's around it and it just moves up and down very freely, you've got to create a new airtight space underneath that. And one of the best ways to do it is with a plastic bag. I suggest a bag that's fairly thin um, so that crumples up inside, inside this container easily. But at the same time, you want it strong enough that it's going to last. So you get a plastic bag and you cut just a piece of the corner out. You don't want to cut too much. You need to make a hole that's just a fraction smaller than this. So you've got to stretch the plastic around it. First, you need to put a little bit of glue just around this edge where the bag is going to be in contact. Then after putting that little bit of glue around there, you insert it inside the bag and force it up through that hole. So that the bag will sit very, very snugly around that crier. Try not to get glue on the inside of the bag. If you do, then you've got to wipe it out because that bag has to be able to easily fill up with air once it's inside the crier. So you've got that around the, the mechanism. Now you need to let that glue set and harden off really well. So I've waited now for the glue to dry. I've actually used a um, two-part epoxy resin 
The reason why I use that is because I, I know it's not going to melt the plastic. Um, the staying power is very good. It dries quickly and you only need a very, very small amount to make the plastic stick. So here we have inside the bag. Now you need to check that none of the bag has stuck in places you don't want it to. And that's looking pretty good. Now if you bring that together, yeah, see how it's working? So that's what it does inside of this. So we put it back inside here. Just make sure those edges aren't sticking in. It can be a tight fit. That's why it's important also to have a thin plastic bag um, because uh, it doesn't take a lot of thickness around the edge of that little device before it won't move. It'll stick. So you now have all this bag sticking out the top. So you need to cut that down. You want to cut it down too short you can do that again later and bring it down over like that making sure that that little weighted mechanism is sitting flat in the bottom so you that way you've got as much space as possible to fill up with air to create the sound Now we have the end, we need to put back on there. Now what is absolutely vital is that whatever you do to repair this opening at the bottom, it's got to be airtight or it's not going to work. I find um, tape is very good, a very strong tape. Depending on how much room you've got in the doll, you could just bunch that plastic up, the plastic bag, and then tape it over. If there's not much depth for that cry to fit in, then tape that up around the sides, but make sure you go round with the tape right around the edge here to make it as airtight as possible. If it's not 100% airtight, it's not going to work. Okay. So I'm actually using duct tape for this. You need a tape that is very, very strong, that's got real sticking power, that's got real strength in it. So there's no way is it going to come loose. It's going to take more than that. So I'm going to put more in there yet. And what I'm going to do is trim, trim this plas excess plastic off. Again, while you're doing this, keep in mind the size of the aperture that this is going to fit in in the doll. Don't make it too thick around the sides so that it won't fit in through the aperture. It sounds like it's going to work, but make doubly sure. I'm going to go right around here. I think I'll take my glasses off. Won't be able to see you, but I'll be able to see this better. Okay. So, and I'm going to put even more around the bottom. So this uh, black duct tape, tape, I'll say that again, black duct tape is particularly good for this because you know it's not going to come off it's going to stay there no matter what and if you know of a better tape then use that now this is just going to fit 
you know, aperture that's quite large. So I don't have to worry about how much I put around there. But just keep in mind, you don't want to have to make, you don't want to end up making it too thick for the aperture. So there it is. Um, I've had a few Japanese dolls come in that have a very, very tiny cryer. This has worked very successfully for those as well. I've tried it on growlers with a huge success. I'll put my glasses back on. Um, that's been very good. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.